Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my little blog here of a Dairyman's Diary as we proceed to show you the rigmaroles and the daily events that occur as a dairy farmer here in the UK. Uh, we are just on our way back from the store this morning. We've had to go and do a little supply trip for a few things. Um, we needed to pick up some oil for the tractor. The Valtra needs to be serviced before got a little bit of spring work to do with it, some spray and some fertilizer spread and, uh, and it hasn't been serviced for a year so I typically always look to do it before we start with the kind of main silage and the harvest. Uh, so we had to go down, run down, pick up some oil. Uh, we've got a few grass seeds in the back here as well because we're going to go out and um, we're going to plant some, drill some grass seeds today with this. Oh, we'll get around that corner there. Cut that bit out. We're going to go in there, uh, we've got some grass seeds in the back as well, we're going to be off to do a little bit of spring time drilling really with the, with our grass harrows. Uh, turn some old arable land into grassland because we really do need to up our acreage for grassland really. Uh, so that's, um, that's an expensive acquisition, grass seeds at the moment, let me tell you. And finally we have to get some mineral uh, bags for the cows. Um, and we'll have a run through what they look like when we get back up to the yard here. Oh no, we've got a little trail on the back though, and that is quite a heavy little load I'm pulling up here at the moment. Uh, but this old girl's got it, the old Land Rover can manage, no problem. And we're back anyway. So we will, for the time being at least, where can we pull this into? Uh, we'll just loop it around here, because we need to drop the oil into the tractor first, I think. Excellent. So let's have a look and see what we've got, shall we? Okie dokie. So this is my little uh, shopping trolley, if you like, today. Um, this is that oil. Very standard uh, self-explanatory oil, really, for the tractor there. We'll pop that in a second. We've got our grass seeds. Should have more than enough there. Maybe a few bags too many. And then finally we've got our, um, our mineral blocks. Now the reason we use these uh, particularly during the winter months and the early spring when the grass isn't really grown to its full potential there we need to use we need to supplement the cow's diets really with like with mineral minerals and nutrition that uh, nutrients that they would usually get from the grass that they're not able to get because the grass is of a lower quality so that's why we we have to buy this in uh, now this can be in several different versions really you can either Typically you can have mineral like lick blocks, salt blocks that you'll just drop out into the field and the cattle will lick those as and when they want to. Uh, I've got a strap on there still. Uh, or, and they can come and go and lick those as they please. Or you can do what I do here which is mix them into our, um, into our feeding system, into our feeding rotation. So that's what we'll be doing with this. Now typically you can either mix them directly, just pour it into the trough or you can mix it into the feeder. So what we'll usually do is mix it into the feeder as well. Now I've got this one, I'm not sure where I'm going to put this at the moment. So we'll drop that back there. No, oh, but drop it on the floor, look at that. It's not an ex it's not a very uh, cheap dietary supplement, but it is something that's very valuable to get a high quality milk uh, content. And also the well-being of the cattle as well. Uh, but we do need the oil. This is super heavy. Heavens above, where am I going to put this? Drop this over here somewhere, I think. In with the baler for now. Good job I had my uh, porridge this morning. There we go. I'll just have to shut this. So we'll shut the gate. We'll just bring the tractor over to here, I think, to do this. This should be the easiest way to go. Perfect. And whilst we're here as well, let's just jump into the... We're going to be going on to the old international today. Fancy taking her out for a spin. With the grass harrows here, so we just need to drop a bag of two seed into there. Uh, 
So pop that up there. That's gonna just empty into there nicely. That should do this the job. We shouldn't need too much. Um, I should reckon one, one maybe two bags would just about do it. Um, but we will see. We'll leave one in there for now. We've only got a couple of acres. The field we're gonna be um, removing is, or the field we're gonna be seeding is really not that big. Didn't make much put much sense as being a uh, an arable field to be honest. But then we can get so much more use out of it as a as a grassland field. So that's what we'll do. Uh, however, we just need to uh, block myself in here. So we'll just quickly move this out of the way. And just stick it directly behind us there for now. So how are you all doing today on this lovely, lovely sunny spring morning? Hope you're all very well. Welcome to everyone who's joined us today. I um, truly do appreciate you taking the time. So, and if you are new as well, please don't forget to let me know where you're watching from. Uh, I do like to kind of get an idea of where we all uh, watch from. It's I think it's really cool, really neat. If you do have any questions or any comments, don't uh, feel afraid. I am more than willing and able to uh, answer them where possible. So we're just going to crawl this around to the corner. The oil level in here is really low, actually. So we'll just drop that here for now. Okay, we should be good to go. Excellent. So like I say, we are going to be using this tractor a little bit later on. Uh, possibly not today, but over the next couple of days and weeks, we're going to have to start to do a lot more um, spring cultivation. Uh, we've got a couple of fields I'm going to put into whole crop, I think, uh, just for our silage in the autumn. But for now, we'll uh, we'll leave it there. So the field actually just down the road from us here, uh, field number 31 is going to go into maize whole crop. Um, and then we might have some more options as well. But for now, like I say, oh, I've left my Land Rover lights on. Let's turn those off. Um, we're going to just tidy up the livestock, so we'll jump back into the John, the faithful John Deere. They were fed up there this morning, and as usual, they've made a right mess. So we need to just go in and make it a little bit more ship shape in there. They're going to actually need to be mucked out soon as well. So hopefully, we get a few more dry days because I'd really like the grassland just to dry out a touch, so I can actually get onto the fields with a muck trailer. Uh, oh, and our fertilizer arrived yesterday, actually. Uh, so we've got plenty of bags of fertilizer there so we can actually get on with our uh, we will jump back under the grassland again and spread some fertilizer on there just to give them a second boost because uh, we need them to get some good growth in before the silage comes around Yep, what I tend to do is go and take all this grass that's spilt on the floor and mucked around. I'll just shove it all out into the field there. If they want to eat it, they can eat it from the trough in the field. If they don't, then I haven't really wasted anything. That's better. Lovely stuff. Come on, girls, out the way, please. You're always in my way. It's another lovely day here today, actually. It's really holding up well for us. that just playing around in my way I might just tip this over the side here like I say if they want to eat it they'll find it let's go tidy up those gates and yeah once we get this done I think we'll um, we will just go and jump into our tractor and we'll go and do some some drilling quickly I think 
Like I said, it shouldn't take us too long to do at all. There we go. Okay, let's go and fire up the old girl. So before we go over there, let's just have a look. I'll show you our uh, field map here. So right now we have 1551, the very northwest, northeast of the region are our maps or our fields. Beg your pardon. Uh, so we're going to go over there and have a look at those. We're going to drill both of those hopefully into grass, uh, which will give us a little bit more acreage over there. Probably something that we'll use just to make silage bales from, if I'm honest. And just stuck them in the corner, keep them out of the way, and then we've got a secondary supply when we need them. Uh, if you look at right now, for example, we are starting to run a little bit low on silage and hay. Straw we're fine for now, we've got plenty of straw. Uh, but silage and hay we're running a little bit low on, so we may need to look into that. Uh, which is why I'm also thinking of field 31 will go into whole crop and perhaps 18 as well. The only issue with field 18 is it's a little bit far away. Uh, obviously whole crop would have to be led back up to the yard, so it's, that would be quite a trek. Uh, but we'll we'll think about that, we'll work out those logistics at a later time. Uh, now at the moment it's more important that we just go and have a look at the grassland really. And get that all... Um, get that all operational and viable really. I think that's what we need to focus on today. Grass is my most important uh, machine on the farm really, for as a dairy farmer. It's, uh, it's absolutely imperative that that is fully uh, functioning, f uh, very healthy given all of the uh, support it needs to grow. Nice to get the old girl firing, I must say. I must say, for an international, this tractor is really looking good. The, uh, the paintwork hasn't been affected at all. Usually these things are rust buckets, but this one I've got is an absolute gem. Okay. So we're pretty much taking the same trip we took the other day to go and get the straw, which is going a little bit further. So we'll head ourselves over. Everything is just starting to grow really, the, the spring crops that were drilled haven't really come through yet but the uh, you can see the grass is starting to get a little bit of uh, fresh growth to it. Uh, we'd expect usually with another couple of applications of fertiliser uh, still to come in the next week or so that we would like to uh, get the first crop of silage probably in about a month, month six weeks maybe at the, the push. Uh, that'll be what we hope for. Oh, this blooming corner again. There is a truck coming, this tractor's in a high gear. There we go. So yeah, in about six weeks hopefully we'll get a first cut silage in and then hopefully again if we can get some bales made later on in the year that'd be perfect. Uh, we would see us in a good position and then we'll get we obviously have the two silage pits back at the yard. The second one will get filled up with some maize all being well. the yard we came to get the straw from the other day. And here we are. So we will tackle, we'll go into this field first, I do believe. As it's right here. So as you can see, it's all been worked over already. Uh, we worked this over in this uh, as we were doing the spring cultivation work before we thought about maybe turning this back into grass. So it's nice and uh, loose, it's got a good kind of tilt to it, to uh, the topsoil, so should be a nice seed bed. Grass is a hardy uh, plant anyway, it'll grow in pretty much anything. Which is why you always see, if you, you, know, if you look at kind of like sports fields for example, where they get chewed up and turned up, then there'll always be grass coming back there. Quite miraculous. Uh, so we'll just let the hydraulics go. Okay. 
same. So like I say, this field's not very big. I think this is only about four acres. And the other one on the other side might be a little bit less, actually. Not too big. But then again, you know, having an extra six or seven acres of, uh, of grassland for silage when needed is not a bad thing. It's nice to have too much. It's terrible not to have enough, really. Perfect. It's coming through nicely. So we are going to just push through with this. Uh, we'll see how long it... Uh, it shouldn't take us too long at all, actually. In the coming few... Uh, let's say, coming few weeks, this is we kind of look ahead to what's coming up for the, for the farm, really. We're going to have to do a lot of work on the cattle soon. Um, they will have to be tested. Uh, bring the vet in to do some TB testing, uh, which is never a fun thing, but it's a procedure that we can't uh, avoid. Uh, we will be looking to sell some of the older cattle, uh, some of the milkers who are who have run dry really. Uh, we will be looking to sell some of those off. Uh, we're always looking, like I say, we're not quite at our target um, herd number for this year, so we'll look to we'll be bringing some more in some point soon. Um, waiting to kind of find a good uh, market to go to and see if we can acquire some more really. Probably look to get another ten, perhaps. Uh, you may recognise that our finances have increased a little bit. Uh, the reason for that is we actually sold our seed drill. Uh, we had that, we bought that seed drill, it's like a, it's a high production seed drill, high output seed drill, that we purchased when we were still highly inclined uh, towards the agricultural, or well, the arable side of the farm. Uh, but since then obviously we have made some changes to our operation, and we just feel that a drill of that kind of size and uh, capability is a little beyond what the farm needs. So we're going to buy a second hand combination drill. Uh, and also be able to take some of the funds we'll get from the selling of the drill and put that into the, the herd numbers really so it was a decision that we didn't take lightly but thought it was better for the long run um, and it really does equip us for uh, our end goal for this year really which is exactly what we need to think about uh, other than that we have our machines are all in good shape uh, we don't need to worry about anything else we don't need any new tractors or we don't need any, anything else we've got a nice old combine that does the trick and everything else is looking good. So we've become a bit more self-sufficient at the moment. It was a difficult decision to down downgrade some of our equipment. Selling off the big new Holland wasn't easy, but I felt it was something that we had to do. Um, much as I liked my big, or liked my big tractor there, it, it did have to go. So we don't have GPS on this tractor, on the old one, so it's by eye. Uh, the old fashioned way. Let's test how good my eyesight is. I'm not keeping very straight, that's for sure. Come on, there you go. The clutch on this tractor is quite heavy, so it doesn't, it takes a lot of... If you spend a day on this, ploughing for example, you sure know about it when you finish. Quite funny, I was in an auction the other day and I was talking to a fellow farmer who is actually um, more arable focused, and increasingly more arable focused, swallowing a lot of land up at a vast rate or not. He's and he had his huge shiny John Deere there and he's singing the praises of the John Deere and what it could do and all of its uh, fancy electronics and you know I just thought that give me my 1255 any day this is this tractor seen me through a lot and it's uh, likely going to continue to so wouldn't change it for the world so you even got some air conditioning what more do you need a comfy-ish seat and some air conditioning and you're fine Alright, so what we might do here is we might just send up the drone quickly. Uh, I've got my little nephew's drone in. Uh, I don't know how to use it. He's around here somewhere using it. I think he's hiding over the head there. Uh, we're going to send that up there and we'll get this finished up. And then, yeah, we might even just jump into that next field across there and see how we get on. So we shall come back to you when we're all said and done. And we'll see how we're looking. So until then, we'll catch you in a little while.
Okay then, I think we're just gonna uh, screw over and do that other paddock as well whilst we're in the, on the roll, so to speak. Uh, this one didn't take too long to do at all. You can see it's left a nice little, um, nice little seed bed there. Uh, we will come in here and get with the rollers and just get this flattened down, just to give the nice ceiling any moisture that's in the ground at the moment. Should do a grand job, and then we should probably start to see some grass seed emerging. Well, within the next next uh, week to ten days, I should imagine. Uh, but yeah, we'll be looking great for that. Uh, now we typically we'll, we do a lot of reseeded. Um, we typically go through and reseed all of our grass seed probably once every three to four years. The slight the the paddocks closer to the house will seed more frequently because they get a heavy usage, uh, and we have to revitalize that grassland around there. Uh, we are going to be looking to bring in uh, seed and some cover crops shortly as well and some fodder crops uh, for the cattle to graze on, uh, which will be an interesting uh, experiment really. So we might be looking at some kale, some uh, stubble turnips amongst other things and we'll, uh, we'll see how those progress. But yeah, all in all not too bad at all. Nice and dry day again so we're able to get onto some ground and make some progress. So we will continue. No time like the presence. Uh, so just need to fold up the old tractor. Lovely stuff. And we will crack on over the road there. So we'll leave it here. In the coming episodes, like I say, we're going to be discussing a little bit more about our injections and the uh, the vet's visit that we have to schedule in at some point. Uh, that's going to be a bit of a stressful time, but we'll look into that one. I'll, I'll document it all as we progress through. Uh, elsewhere, we'll be, we've got a lot of... Um, we have got to get out into the arable land at some point. We need to get some uh, get some pesticides onto the... Onto the spring crops, some uh, post emergence as they start to uh, come through there, and we'll check on what's going on there. So there's going to be lots to cover. Uh, there always is around this time of year, particularly as it gets a little bit warmer and fingers crossed a little bit drier. Um, but yeah, we'll keep in touch with that, and we'll also, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get some new milk contracts coming through soon, so we should get a bit more to discuss there as well. But like I say, do keep on touch uh, and keep an eye out for what's going on there. There will always be something to cover. Until next time though folks, thank you very much for watching as always. I have been your humble host Frank and I truly appreciate you spending the time to join me on this little journey here. If you have liked what you've seen, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you are new to the channel, firstly welcome, secondly, hit that subscribe. Um, it does really help the channel grow and it will also help you kind of figure out what we're doing and where we're going next. So uh, that is always an extra bonus. But until next time, thank you very much for watching as always. Do stay safe, enjoy what you're doing, but most importantly, happy farming.